Yes, I know a new doctor was cast and everyone's really excited, but I think we're all missing the really big picture here. What's the next sonic screwdriver gonna look like? So before I get into it, let me just address the lateness of this video. Obviously, I would have liked to have gotten this out sooner, but I spent the weekend helping out a friend because despite all appearances, I do have friends, I do have a life. And in a way, I'm kind of glad that I'm a little later on this because it's giving me more time to like actually think and digest the announcement rather than just spitting out uh, a hot take on the casting of the new Doctor. But yes, I am behind. This is today, review of the first episode of the new season of Game of Thrones. That'll be tomorrow. And then hopefully I'm caught up. So the Doctor is going to be Jodie Whittaker, who is an actress I don't really know. And once I realized that, I realized I don't... I don't actually have a ton of to say about the casting of her specifically, which bums me out because that means that pretty much all I can talk about are the broad implications of changing the Doctor to a woman, which I've kind of addressed before, but I guess I'll rehash a few things. Um, I will say, I have seen her in one thing. I saw her in Attack the Block. I saw that about five years ago. My memory was that she was very good in it, but... That's a hazy memory at this point. It's not a lot to go off of. Um, I have heard she was very good in Broadchurch, which I suppose gives me another reason to prioritize watching at the very least the first season of Broad, first series of Broadchurch, so that I can get a better sense of Chris Chibnall as a showrunner and get a sense of her as an actress, and then maybe I'll have a better opinion about how she might play the Doctor. But unfortunately, since I don't know much about her, I got to talk the broad stuff. Which, and of course, the elephant in the room is that the Doctor is now a woman. So I did a video a while back, a couple of years, I forget how many, it was like between two and three years ago, I did a video explaining my concerns about the Doctor possibly being played by a woman. Now since then, and I had basically two major branches of concerns, since then I've softened on one of them and I'll try, if you really want me to go into detail on that, go back to the old video, I'll put a link down below. Um, but. Uh, short of that, I'll rehash it very quickly here. Basically, my concerns were initially logistical and then sort of more philosophical and character concerned. The logistical concern was that I wanted to have it uh, addressed why the Doctor was becoming a woman now when he never had before. And my hang up at the time was that um, we had recently found out, uh, not long before I made that video, that you know the Doctor had had thought he was done regenerating, that he thought Matt Smith was going to be his last body. So he didn't know he was going to get a whole regeneration cycle. And I was kind of hung up on the idea of like, why did he not become a woman before he burned through all of his regenerations? Why now? I kind of still like to see that addressed if they can figure out a way to do it without stopping the story dead in order to do it. But honestly, if they never address that, I'll be okay. I'll live with it. I've kind of gotten over that one. Would still like to see it addressed. Um, that's not as big a concern for me now as it was at the time. Um, additionally, though, my bigger concern was more having to do with concerns about the betrayal and how casting the woman as a doctor. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna refer to it as that. It's not that the doctor being a woman was a problem. It was that I had concerns that the doctor no longer being a man was going to cause some issues because of some things tied to the character that I felt were more inherently normally masculine traits, and I'll explain that a little bit better. So the first point of concern I had was that I I, I do feel that the Doctor's relationship, not just with his companions, but like with the universe as a whole, pretty much everyone he runs into, is a fundamentally paternal relationship. He's usually somewhat emotionally distant, yet protective. He wants, he can be harsh, but he wants to see the people around him grow and become better and develop. And I do, I do believe that fundamentally it is a more paternal relationship and not very much of a maternal relationship. So I didn't want them to change that dynamic, making the Doctor a woman suddenly make the character more maternal rather than paternal. I'm not too concerned that they're going to do that. I think they understand the care. I think Chibnall and everyone else understands the character well enough to not alter that aspect of the character. And uh, a woman can express paternal um, tendencies, and I think we'll be okay. I, again, when I did my first video, I had more concerns about a woman expressing those traits, but I, again, I'm kind of not as hung up about that idea now. The one thing I am still concerned about, though, that I brought up the last time I talked about this, is that 
the doctor, some of the key traits of the doctor that are usually at play, and I, the degree of each of these I'm going to talk about varies from incarnation to incarnation, but I think some key aspects that are core to the doctor are deliberate and intentional subversions of the standard male hero. So your typical male hero in a sort of sci-fi, action-y, adventure-y kind of story comes in, takes charge, you know, has weapons, fights the, the enemies, and stands, stands his ground. The doctor, by contrast, comes in, plays the idiot, doesn't use anything that is explicitly built to be a weapon first, and his primary instinct when confronted with danger is to run away. He may stand his ground later, but his first instinct is to run away. All of these are subversions, and they subvert the expectation of what we expect out of a standard male hero in these sorts of situations. If the doctor is not a man, we lose that subversion a bit, because you can still keep those traits, and they can be played by anybody, and that's fine, but the subversive nature gets lost because a woman walking into the same situation doesn't have an expectation of being take charge, using weapons, you know, standing ground, etc., etc. So the fact that the doctor often doesn't do those things is no longer a subversion. And I think it's kind of key to Doctor Who as a show and the doctor as a character that the character is subversive to what is the standard hero of a lot of these kinds of stories. And I I do feel that it's going to be difficult to have the Doctor and not lose it because basically there's two options. Either you keep all those traits, which I think is probably the better option because I don't think they should be drastically altering the character just because it's a woman now, but you keep all those traits but they lose their subversive flavor, or you alter those traits in it's and to something that would be subversive to a woman in that situation, but then you're altering core parts of the Doctor's character and there's problems either way. So that is sort of my remaining concern. Now that said, I think the best, I, I, I'm not gonna reserve judgment and I'm not saying, well, we will lose this, therefore it will be bad. It, it's more a case of, I don't see a way to avoid losing the subversive aspects, but I do believe that there is no such thing as a perfect story. There's no perfect narrative, there's no perfect character, and I don't mean a character with no character flaws, I mean there's no perfectly written character, but good stories, great stories, what they do is their strengths sort of pave over the faults and the flaws, and they make you not care about them or maybe even not notice them. So it is my hope that uh, Jodie Whittaker will be so good in the role and that Chris Chibnall will be so good at running the show that the loss of the more subversive aspects of the character will not bother me because the show will hopefully do so many other things well. So this, and you know what I want to address briefly, I've been making a point since the announcement happened of avoiding Doctor Who message boards and everything else. So I don't know what the general reaction is. I know what the reaction among my friends is because, you know, we we talk and we catch up and we say, hey, what do you think? So, but I don't know what the broad reaction is. I have no doubt that there is at the very least a small, very vocal percentage of people really shooting off their mouths about the Doctor now being a woman. Here's the thing I'm going to say to them, because as I said, I myself do have some concerns about the Doctor no longer being a male, but here's the thing. The idea, the, the idea that Time Lords can alter their gender from regeneration to generation was codified and made canon as a concept back in The Doctor's Wife. That episode aired more than six years ago, and since then we had Missy, we had the General in uh, Hellbent, reinforcing and reminding you, this is a thing that happens. You've had six years to get used to this idea, all right? And I get if you still have, you know, concerns, and I even get if maybe you just didn't want it to happen yet. But if you didn't at least think it was inevitable that at some point the doctor was going to be a woman, you haven't been paying attention and you just kept your head in the sand going, la 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 la. So, if you couldn't just adjust yourself so that even your disappointed reaction could be civil over the course of six years, come on. But uh, in any case, that 
that's sort of my general thing. I am I am hopeful. I like I said, I, I wanted I want to try and find the time to watch the first series of Broadchurch now so I can get a better sense of Jodie Whittaker as an actress. Honestly, though, what I'm much more interested in, what I'm we're gonna be much more curious to see right now is when we get the reveal of the costume and the look. Because I honestly think that's going to tell us a heck of a lot more about this incarnation of the Doctor than just the casting does. And I'll use the example of Matt Smith on that. When Matt Smith was first announced to be playing David Tennant, and I first saw him, like with this little interview snippet of him saying, oh yeah, I'm going to be the new Doctor, I hated him. I'm like, this is wrong. This is awful. And that's just me looking at Matt Smith being Matt Smith. And it, you know, it gave me no indication of how he was going to play. And I was just projecting all this. Oh, this will be terrible because he'll just be a, a knockoff David Tennant. And he'll, it's this and that. And all of which was wrong. But my expectations started to shift when the first images of him came out with that bow tie and the tweed jacket and the suspenders. And I remember seeing that for the first time going, okay and then thinking about it going well all right well that's kind of like an old you'd expect that look on an older guy but he's so young that's kind of interesting it's a look i would have expected to see in the classic era not necessarily in new who that's interesting and it got me more in line it started to point me in the direction of how he was going to actually play the character and ultimately i love matt smith as the doctor he's one of my favorites if not my favorite um it's it's harder for me to say i know in the past i i did a doctor ranking where he was at the top um i need to redo that because it's it's a tougher call for me these days as to who's number one but he's still right up there i love matt smith so i do think that getting a look and seeing what the Doctor is going to look like and how the Doctor is choosing to dress is going to tell us a heck of a lot more about how the character is going to be played than just the fact that it's a woman, which tells us almost nothing, honestly, which was why I spent the bulk of this video talking in these broad philosophical strokes as opposed to getting into, you know, the nitty gritty of things. Because you can't. There's nothing to go off of. Even if you know her better as an actress than I do, all that tells you is like her caliber as a performer, you know, what is she capable of? That still gives you no indication of how she's going to actually play this part. So anyone, whether they are going, oh, this will be the best thing ever because she'll play it like this, or they're going, this will be the worst thing ever because she'll play it like this, they're both talking out their butts because we don't know. We have no clue how she's going to play this. But we'll get our first indicators when we see the costume. So that is what I'm going to be keeping an eye out for. Once we get a first image of that, I'll probably do a video on it then because I, like I said, I think there'll be a lot more to actually substantively say about this new incarnation of the Doctor. So, new Doctor, Jodie Whittaker, what are your thoughts? Whatever they are, um, and even if you're negative on her, can you at least be civil about expressing that? Please, I, I will be happy to hear you out. Just don't be a jerk. But whatever your thoughts are, drop them down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter at Council of Geeks. Give a listen to the Council of Geeks podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher. I am also one half of the Punch Like a Girl podcast, also available on iTunes and Stitcher. And until next time, this council is adjourned.